In this video, we're going to be learning how to make an advanced heat map using R. A heat map can look like this. Sometimes, when your samples have multiple types of information, it helps to have a concise way to represent what kind of variables you got. So, for example, we have pink for treatment and gray for control. If your treatment has a time course, it also helps to have colors for different time periods in the treatment. So let's get started. First, we need a couple packages. We have gplots, something I described in a previous video on how to make a simple heat map. We're also going to use heat map plus, um, a similar version of heat map function, and we're going to use our color brewer so we can have more color options. So I'm going to upload some sample data. I'm going to use my example script here. I'm going to share this in the comments section. So this is my sample data. It's a CSV file. It looks like this, where we have our mysterious entities and these row names, which represent my sample names. We have control data and treatment data. If you have a tab delimited file, you can use read table, where you denote the separator as a tab. In both functions, you can use row names equals one to denote your first column as your row name. Um, anytime you're interested in how a function works, just use the question mark before the function name. And here we have some documentation on how to read CSV work. So sometimes um, it helps to have an efficient way of picking out what kind of samples you have, just based on the name, rather than memorizing or figuring out what kind of index you have in your data. So the way I like to do that is using the grepl function. Say we only want to pick out the samples with the name control in it. The first parameter of the grepl function is the expression we're looking for. The second parameter is what we're scanning exactly. We're scanning the row names of my sample data. So let's see if this works. And here you go. We have samples that are only controls, the only the control data. Now say you want only treatment data at two weeks. Well, we don't have two weeks. Let's try three weeks. Okay, so it's similar, except you change your expression to treatment and three weeks. Okay, let's see. Yeah, and here we go. We only have treatment data from three weeks. Now say you want to pick out um, your samples only with the GSM number between 100 and 120. To do that, it's a very similar technique. So, GSM data. What you can do, you can define what digits you're interested in. So we're using regular expressions here. 0 to 2, and we want the third digit, 0 to 9. But that's implied here, so let's see, GSM data. Here you are, so we have only data from 100 to 129. So that's just an example of how this works. Now we're going to take, put it into action. We're going to create a list of colors for our data. So I have the function already written out here. I'm going to create a list called condition colors. And it creates a list of colors based on what sample is in that position in the data. So anytime my function sees the word treatment, it's going to use the color number pink. Now these six character um, color codes, I got them from a website called rapidtables.com. Here you can see what code represents a different color. We also have a chart here for predefined colors. And these are the ones that R uses. So um, I'm using just pink and gray. So with this function, it should be creating a list that's the same length as the number of samples I have. So 
as expected, I have 100 samples and 100 color codes. Do you want to see how this looks? Print, I'll print it up. And here it is. As you remember, the control data is at the bottom of my table, so that's why you see it here. So now we're ready to make our first heat map. Test. So since my my data puts the samples in the rows um, and the variables in the columns, I actually prefer it um, in the opposite way for my, my table. I like to have the samples as the columns. So I'm going to take the transverse of my data. And this needs to be numeric, so I'm going to use as matrix. Okay, and there's my heat map function. It's heat map two. Now before we use this function, we need to upload all the packages to our library. So I'm going to copy and paste here. Library. So as you can see, it adds gplots to the library. And this is something you need to do each time you restart R. Installing packages is something you only have to do once, unless the package updates. Um, but library uploading is something you need to do every time. So let's see. We have condition colors listed as our column side colors. That's what column side colors means. And this should be OK. Let's see. Here we go. And here it is. Our samples are here. And our variables are here. As you can see, the control data clusters. I'm using the average cluster function. This is up to you what kind of method you want. Um, there's median, there's average, there's ward clustering. Um, and you can just use the default if you like, if you don't know what kind of clustering you want to use. So you'll see it's a different pattern. So here we only have. Um, one row of annotations. Let's say you want to have more, more information. You want to have another row to talk about what kind of treatment time has gone on for each sample. In that case, that's when I would use the heat map plus function. So before we do that, we need to create the list of colors for our treatment time. So to do this efficiently, we have Let's list out what treatment times we have. We have 0 weeks, 1 week, 3, 8, and 24. OK. And I want to, um, instead of manually picking out the color code, I want to use Brewer to ge automatically generate a list of five colors for my five time periods. So Brewer pal is the function, and then I put five for five treatment. Um, times and see there we go okay so I need to name it set one set one is the name of the color palette I'm drawing from Here we go. OK, so let's see how this looks. Yeah, here are um, five color codes we're going to use. OK, so now I have a function. That automatically generates um, a list of color codes. So here I pasted together a, a, a string, basically a concatenating the word uh, weeks to each of my color numbers, um, my treatment numbers, um, so I can find it. I like to specify weeks because, as you know, if you have 22 weeks and 2 weeks, if you just say 2, Grepple is going to pick out both 22 and 2. But if you only want 2 weeks, it's good to have the character in front and the characters in the back to define what you want. So you do this there's no mistaking 22 weeks for two weeks okay so here we are okay sorry my mistake there um okay so here we are we have treatment colors let's take a look there you are 
Okay, so because I have two things, two color annotation boxes, I need to bind them together. Okay, so I'm going to use my C bind. Okay, so now take a look. It binds them together. So the sample has these two colors assigned to it. And I want to give them names. Pony alpha. As you remember, my first column is for condition. My second column is for treatment type. And there we are. So now we're ready to use the heat map plus function. Okay, so here it is. Um, I like to have my heat maps with blue and red. You're free to change those colors. Um, and then I have my margins defined and my title. That's what main is. Okay, so let's see. So here it is. We see these and we see these. Looks great. So now we have to add the legend. That is done using the legend function. Now you can define where you want your legend to sit on your heat map. You can say um, where you want the location based on keyword. And here are your keywords, bottom right, bottom, any of those. I like to have it on the top right personally. So here we are. So we have two legends. We have one for treatment time and one for condition. So I I chose my, uh, my location here. These are the coordinates on the heat map, 0.8 on the x-axis and 1 on the y-axis um, as the coordinates. And I have my treatment time. So my treatment, I want to put the word weeks. Um, my current list has just the numbers. So that's why I do concatenation here. Um, and then fill defines what those boxes are going to be filled with. They're filled with the colors that we already defined in this um, list. Okay, so treatment color options. And then CX is the, the size of your legend. So we add the legend, and there you go, there's your legend. And then we want to add a second legend for treatment. So here I'm, you can define the vector of um, name, and then here's the color according, respectively. So it looks kind of weird here, but I swear when you export it to PDF, it looks better. So that's why I'm going to do that. So PDF, export. And then dev auth. You always do dev auth after you call um, one of these file format functions. So here you are. Okay, so it's going to look like this pretty much. And if you want, you can adjust the location of this. Point nine. Let's try that. Yeah, so you can play around with that. And I wanted to cover one more thing. Um, that's, as I say, you can um, define how you cluster. So we have that here. We define our average cluster. You can also define what distance metric you want to use for clustering. So you create a distance function.
Okay, so let's see. Have this written up. This is how it looks with my define descent function. This is how it looks without. So you can see it, it changes how the question looks. It's up to you how you like to do it. Or you can always use the default. Yeah, so thank you for listening to this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to post in the comments below.